Hello, Just Too Good here, and today I'm counting down the 20 LEGO sets I want the most which have an official release for Winter 2018. These can be sets that release as early as November all the way up to February for these particular themes. And without further ado, let's get into this. Starting off the list is the LEGO City Mining Starter Set, which is all I want from the LEGO City Mining sub-theme for 2018. It has a new piece as the sub-theme introduces, the rock and the spider, and some nice minor minifigs. I mean it's no power miners, but for what it costs, only 10 bucks, I'm okay with that. I know, Minecraft on the most wanted list, what is this, Spring 2016? Well look, LEGO made a good choice, cheap little battle packs are coming this time around. I like the style on Minecraft minifigures and always wish we got them in more cheap sets, like do more skin packs please. Either way, this little battle pack has a zombie pigman, a design I always thought was cool but never had, the wither skeleton, who's another one I never had, Alex, and this little magma cube which looks neat. Not only that, but it comes with a cute little playset. Now I wish it was a little cheaper than 15 bucks, but I'll still take it. Next is a Harley Quinn Cannonball Attack, which isn't the best of the LEGO Batman movie sets in terms of the build, but it isn't bad. I'd say it's better than most of the summer 2017 wave vehicles. The cannon is definitely the best part of the truck, and the two buildings are the only type of facades I appreciate. Simple and small street buildings. The inclusion of the Phantom Zone projector is neat for those who skipped the Arkham set like I did. Plus, the minifigure selection is pretty good. I love the Gentleman Ghost minifigure. That's the best in here. Crazy Quilt looks great besides his lack of arm printing, and I like how they switched stuff up with this Harley Quinn. I just wish the set was less than $50, $40 would have been perfect, and that Batgirl had an exclusive variant or something. What? Two Minecraft sets on a wanted list? Yeah, it's the other battle pack called the Melon Farm. This has even more interesting pieces, the watermelons and the villager in a cheap set. And it's the cheapest way to get a creeper so far, all on top of a cute little play set. Cyborg is the only brickhead showing up on this list and for good reason. Out of all the first wave 2018 brickhead sets, he's the only one that looks the most accurate and interesting. I love how they captured the half human, half robot physique. It's simple but executed perfectly. And this little blasting arm is awesome in Brickhead's form. Nice part usage with the gold bar pieces in light gray. Funny enough, his skin tone is more accurate here than the LEGO minifigure. Either way, I'll compensate with not getting the LEGO minifigure form of the DCEU Cyborg by getting the awesome Brickhead form. For this batch of Mighty Micros, I'm much more hyped for the Marvel ones than DC. The Star-Lord one is the best. The Mini Milano is cute, but I love the Star-Lord and even the Nebula minifigure. More importantly, that awesome mixtape is an extremely useful printed piece. The Thor vs Loki one is great as well, with a comic version of Loki and a hilarious looking Thor. The Spidey one... I'm so tired of these Spider-Man ones. This one is good for those who didn't get the Bridge Battle set. I mean, the Scarlet Spider in here is in a cheap set, and he doesn't really look cartoonish like other Mighty Micro sets. Though it's sad he lacks the arm printing of the regular minifigure. And I wish Sandman didn't have the sand printing again on his torso. Would have been so useful to get the plain striped torso. Oh well. The Superman and Crypto team up set is a mesh of two good $20 superhero sets the Ghost Rider team up and the Green Lantern set. I never expected Lego to do a Lobo figure, but here we are. He's such a mature character and the minifigure looks great. I love the use of the DC EU Aquaman hair in black, that's darn useful. The crypto figure is awesome as well. Lobo's space bike is accurate, but I never really cared for it as a design, so it doesn't really appeal to me. Other build is fine, I guess. I like all these weird newer pieces in trans green. Still, it's all 20 bucks, so it won't put me back much. I just wish I was interested in the builds a lot more. The Speed Force Freeze Pursuit set is a good $30 pack. They keep the price low but still knock it out with desirable minifigures. In here, there's this awesome reverse flash and a cheap way to get the Cyborg from the Flying Fox set but with a different new torso print. Good, I love his face print. And they pack in a new flash in addition to a decent Killer Frost. However, where this is better than something like the Lobo set, I actually like the helicopter. I know, this is coming from the guy who roasts every LEGO City helicopter and water plane. But look, this one is sleek and reminds me of an Alpha Team set. I don't know, it has its charm. The Killer Frost vehicle is crap though, there's no passing that with any nostalgia. The LEGO City Mountain Fugitive set is the best starter set in a while. Lots of great new pieces of the Mountain Police line in this cheap set. This nice log tile, that awesome beehive piece, and the blue hat variant of the new hat and hair combo. Throw in a couple of gold bars and it makes for a cheap winner. 
It's pretty bold of LEGO to put the cool looking execution troopers exclusively in a cheap battle pack, but hey, it's good for the consumers. That's the main reason I want this set. The other minifigures aren't anything rare, but they're just throw-ins. Heck, the build isn't particularly good either. Alright, LEGO knows what they're doing. Nobody is going to care about the other stuff. This set will sell like hothcakes just because of the Tahu execution troopers. Oh, and don't believe the rumors that this will be any more than 15 bucks. It's retailing for 15 bucks, trust me. Next is the Egghead Food Fight set, a great set for its $30 price. This is a pretty funny set, I mean Egghead getting a LEGO figure is just too hilarious and the Condiment King figure has been long awaited since the original LEGO Batman movie trailers. As I've said before, I wish they included the recolored LEGO squishy pieces the movie version of Condiment King had, but it's not the worst thing ever. But those colors would have also been incredibly useful. The minifig mech is a fresh take. I love when LEGO changes things up with their mechs, and this one has an incredibly unique, round, and cartoony feel. I guess you could say this set is pretty excellent. Uh, okay, I'll show myself out. Garmadon's Volcano Lair harkens back to LEGO Agents Volcano Lair more so than Jestro's Volcano Lair. And that's a good thing, because I regretfully passed on the Agents Volcano Lair in 2008. This one is an open-faced volcano, and I love the structure of it all. There's this nice lava represented with Trans Orange, a computer lab, and of course the launching feature all the way up top. Not only that, but this set is loaded with great exclusive bad guys. Like, I don't know why they didn't pack these in with the other sets of this wave, but I guess they thought this would be a harder sell, being a play set and all. There's an exclusive Sand Green Octopus Man, this first General Number 1, and this cookie looking GIT dude. He's my favorite of the set. All packed into a perfectly sized set for 50 bucks, I think this set will be one I asked for on Christmas. The face off at the mine is a LEGO Black Panther set in which I'm still astonished is only 20 bucks. This set has so much packed into it. A huge rhino build which seems to have some armor, that's pretty darn original. And the side build with the mine cart has the new roller coaster track wheels which is great for a $20 set. And of course the minifigures are the main selling point. This Black Panther has this nice blue trim, Killmonger this gold one, and Okoye is probably my favorite of the set. I know I probably didn't say her name right, but gosh, it's super useful to get a new female face print on a reddish brown headpiece. 7th on my list is the LEGO Batman Movie Bat Space Shuttle Set. You see, LEGO is known to overprice their space shuttle sets, but this one is 80 bucks. That's a price I can mess with. It's weird, don't get me wrong, I never thought we'd see a space shuttle with Batman. However, the design looks great. It's a full build with rocket boosters and an external tank. Fittingly, you get a Bat Rover, and unfittingly, you also get a Bat Kayak. But both are cute and welcome. There's a side build that holds new suits, which I just wish matched the style of the one in the Batcave. However, those new suits are dope. I love Reggae Man, a suit I never thought would be in a LEGO set. The Firestarter suit and Bat Space suits are okay, I just appreciate their new prints mainly and the new cowl color for the Firestarter one. However, I don't like the other figures. Just a normal Batman, a reprint of the CMF Robin stands the face print, and a normal Catwoman. Still, the main build is great and the Reggae Man suit is incredible, I can't wait to get my hands on this one. The LEGO Star Wars Act 2 Island Training is a set that you know right away will be a hot seller. I mean geez, LEGO is wising up and introducing highly desirable figures in cheap sets. I've seen people mad at this Luke minifigure, but like, what? I'm usually called just too negative and I love this design. People will probably point out how it's inaccurate in the comments, but I don't see any glaring flaws in that aspect. And you know me, I'm a sucker for new hair pieces. Now if this set was just good for the Luke minifigure, it wouldn't be so high on my list. However, it isn't. There's other stuff I really like here, for example the inclusion of a Porg in a cheap set. I'm not freaking out over these fuzzballs, but they're still an interesting figure who were previously only in the $800 Falcon set. Plus there's a new Ray figure. The playset in here isn't amazing, but it's still good, I like the shrine-esque hut design. The interior is cute with a little fold out bed and cooking station. However the worst part of the set is the fact that it's 30 bucks. like LEGO knew this would sell well already, so they spiked it up $5. Heck, a couple years ago I'd say this should have been 20 bucks, but everything is increasing now. The second Black Panther set, the World Talon Fighter, is a worse build than the Battle at the Mine, but the minifigures in this one are incredible. Like, Nakaya is one of my favorite minifigures of Winter 2018. Love, love, love the new hairpiece and the headpiece with a new face print is so useful, but Killmonger rocks with that really spooky looking mask, Claw looks awesome with a cheap way to get the hairpiece in black, and even a nice new Black Panther minifig. Now back to the ship, I mean I like that I can't say it looks like any other LEGO ship, but I don't know, it's not the most pleasant looking, even with its interesting curvature. Still this is only 30 bucks, so I'll be sure to get it right away. 
Fourth is the Lego Batman movie Justice League Party, and dang, this set is great. It's one of the rare wide release sets that is more of a display slash collector's piece than a playset, much like a double decker couch. I mean, all the minifigures here are exclusive. They even went the extra mile to give Superman an awesome new face print. I love that. The Wonder Dog is adorable, the classic Green Arrow has finally come, and it's nice to get more obscure characters with great prints like El Dorado and Hawk Girl. Then the build is so unique with that Krypton feel. I love the DJ table with nice printed records. All this is packed into a fantastic 30 bucks set that will definitely bring in fans of all ages and types. This is one of the sets that has already come out and I'm just resisting the urge to get it to save up my money. You see, I have a backlog of DDCs to build so I know if I buy this one I won't be building it for a while. But it has so many things I love in LEGO sets. It's a huge play set, it has a gorgeous lineup of exclusive minifigures, little easter eggs, new pieces, and our first proper LEGO roller coaster. God, this one is just too amazing. Not only will it make a fantastic play piece, it will make a crazy display piece. It may not be the prettiest, but it's definitely one of the most creative sets out there. I made an extensive thoughts video on the new Downtown Diner set, but to sum it up easily, this is my favorite modular in around 3 years. It's a new take on modulars for sure, almost looking like it's from a different time period than the others. The pastelish colors give me this Paradisa slash retro South Florida feel. I love the round design and parts like the front window, bottom level roof, and the inside encompasses all of those burger classic style diners like a Waffle House. It's complete with great little details like a jukebox, gumball machine, and even an upper level exercise room with a boxing ring. I'm only dissatisfied with the tan at the front and that they didn't keep the tradition of including classic style minifigure faces. Though the exclusive minifigures are dope like the rocker guy with the singing face. All in all, this is the first module I'm motivated to get right when it comes out with my Christmas money. Of course the seasonal minifigure series is at the top of this list. This time around it's the second series for the Lego Batman movie. Sure it's not as perfect as the first series, but there's still some incredible minifigures in this one. I adore the classic Jor-El and Zod, the obscure Claw King and Black Vulcan, the hilarious Soccer Mom Batgirl and Beach Joker, the classic Wonder Twins, the perfectly executed Hugo Strange, gosh there's just a lot to love in this series. Sure there's a few duds, like the lame beach variants for Batman, Robin, and Batgirl, but still this really captures the wacky feel of the Lego Batman movie and overall it's just a nice closure to the theme. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you're interested in getting exclusive looks at upcoming LEGO List videos, consider becoming a 20 plus supporter on my Patreon, linked in the description. Either way, be sure to let me know which sets you want from this season, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Bye.